Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome finally to another video. Oh my god, it has been two and a half weeks I think since I last uploaded a video. I was on vacation in Spain and I desperately needed a break. Before my vacation, it was so busy. I was really stressed. I felt burned out. Now I feel a bit more recharged and I'm ready to come again here with some bookish content. So for today, I will be wrapping up all the books that I read during the months of June and July. But before we're gonna get into this wrap up, I have to thank today's sponsor, which I am just like speechless and mind blown that I can say that today's sponsor is book of the month. Oh my god, I'm holding up their signature blue box. Insane. <laughs> book of the month is a super fast growing online bookish service specially made for readers like you and I. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and to help readers discover books that they will love. How their service works is that each month their team selects five new releases that you, the reader, can choose from. So they have like a curated selection. And because of this, you can spend more time reading and less time researching which books are coming out next month that are actually super good because that is what book of the month does for you. Their service is risk-free because you can skip any month without any charge. But do know that book of the month only ships to US shipping addresses, so not internationally. Plus they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. And if you use the code FRESH5, you can get your first book of the month box for $9.99, which is extremely cheap for a hardcover book. Let me show you the five books that they picked for the month of August. So first off, we have their literary fiction pick, which is called Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson, which is a moving portrait of a family struggling to make ends meet in a logging town divided over the fate of its forest. Another book that takes place like in nature and has a very unique promise is Once There Were Wolves, written by Charlotte McConaughey. In this book, we follow a woman's journey to Scotland who is determined to save the wilderness, but tragedy strikes as her new life starts to settle. And the third book that I have to show you guys is an early release called The Inheritance of Orquidea de Vina, which is written by Zoraida Cordova. At their matriarch's funeral, the Montoyas receive a truly magical inheritance, but with great riches comes great enemies. One of the picks that they chose for August is I think a book that you all will be super super excited about because it is written by Helen Hong and this is her new release which is called The Heart Principle. She's the author of The Kiss Quotient. I haven't read it, have heard a lot of amazing things about it. After a failed one night stand or two, Anna's son realizes she might have found something rare with Quan Diep true love. But my personal number one pick for August, let me show you, is this one. <laughs> Not a Happy Family by Shari Lapina. And thank you so much, book of the month. Yes, I've got great taste. <laughs> this is a twisted domestic suspense of a wealthy family unraveling after their parents are murdered. And I'm just so excited to be picking up this one very soon because it really makes me think of Knives Out, which was one of my favorite movies. It was so entertaining. And I love kind of like those murder mystery types of stories. Murder in the family, lots of money distress. It sounds just very intriguing to me. So thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. You can click the link in my description box down below, use code FRESH5, and then you can get your first box for just $9.99. And right now let's go on to the books that I read during the month of June. So if you have been watching a couple of my videos recently, you know that I read Alexandra Roseland's favorite books. Lexi is one of my very good friends here in the book community and I just really wanted to give her like reading taste a go. So I read three of her favorite books. Well, actually two. We buddy read one together, but it has become a new favorite for the both of us. So I will talk about that in just a little bit. But if you haven't watched that video yet, you can click on it somewhere here up on the screen. The first one that I read for that video is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is a super hyped book here in the book community. It focuses on our main character called Linus Baker and he works as a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth and he visits all of like these orphanages to check if everything is okay. But then he gets a very like specific task to go to the secluded island on which there is like an orphanage with six super magical children who could actually bring about the end of day. 
days and Linus kind of just like stays there for a month, checks in with the children and it is very much like a story of found family. I liked it but I wasn't like blown away as the rest of booktube and more of my in-depth thoughts are shared in my video with Lexi. So I think I gave this one like a three out of five stars. It was just lots of description, not a lot of plot, but I really did like some of the characters. Those are kind of like my brief thoughts on this book. Next up, the new favorite that I discovered during like that video, which is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. And oh my God, do I love this book. Yes, I do. <laughs> this is a paranormal horror book. YA I'd say. I'm always so bad with like classifying genres to certain books so I'm sorry if I make any mistakes please correct me in the comments but in this one we follow the three hollow sisters and 10 years ago they went missing and after a month they very mysteriously came back into the world and after they came back not only did their like appearance kind of change but weird things have been happening around them so very mysterious. When Grey, which is the eldest sister of the three, goes missing again, Iris and Vivi are kind of like trying to find her, relocate her, but they might not be the only ones looking for Grey. It has some like supernatural elements in it. The descriptions are so, so gory. And I actually felt freaked out a couple of times and would not recommend reading this when you're alone by yourself in the dark. And I think that this is a perfect read for like the fall months or maybe for Halloween, or if you are just in the mood for a creepy read with glamor, with horror, with like supernatural otherworldly things, this is the book for you. And I think I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. And then the third and final book that I read for the Reading Lexi's Favorites video is Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. This felt kind of similar to The House in the Cerulean Sea in the fact that there is not a lot of plot. It's a lot of lyrical writing and magical realism. Lexi loves magical realism, I think. Magic has touched every woman in Georgina Fernway's family. No one on the island of By the Sea would ever call the Fernways what they really are. But then again, no one questions the weather moodier than a summer storm or the allegedly 300 year old bird who comes to roost on the island each year. But when By the Sea is rocked by an unthinkable act, what made the Fernway women special suddenly casts them into suspicion. Over the course of one summer, a season of storms of love, of salt, Georgina will learn the truth about magic in all its many forms. It deals a lot with family and sisterly bonds. So if you are a fan of that, this book might be it for you but also definitely a big trigger warning for rape and sexual assault because that is kind of like a theme that this book really focuses on so if that's triggering for you don't pick this one up. I love the whole setting on this island because the characters have kind of just like grown up there and haven't really visited any other places so it felt very isolated but in like a nice magical way. I liked the theme of the book. I liked how it explored it, but the way that the story was told or just, I don't know, something about it didn't fully click with me, but I could like appreciate the book for what it was, for what it is, for what it does. <laughs> so I give this one also a three out of five stars. After reading Lexi's favorites, I didn't really know what to pick up, but I thought maybe a dark fantasy would be my thing. And this one has been on my TBR for a very long time, but I finally picked up Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I have the exclusive collector's edition. And let me tell you, it is a very pretty one. The premise of this book is that you follow two college roommates, Victor and Eli. They were like best friends back in the day in college. But when they had to write their thesis, they found that they have a shared love, a shared fascination for extraordinaries, which are basically people with extraordinary abilities. But when their thesis moves from the theoretical into to the practical, they become extraordinaries themselves. And there is just a ton of stuff that went down in a bad way. It's like a friends to arch enemies story. And now 10 years later, Victor has escaped from prison and is determined to get his revenge on the man who put him there, aided by a young girl with the ability to raise the dead. Eli has spent the years hunting down and killing every EO extraordinary he can find, convinced that they are a crime against God. All except his sidekick, a woman whose power is persuasion and whom he cannot defy. Armed with terrible power on both sides, driven by the memory of betrayal and loss, the arch nemeses have set a course for revenge. But who will be left alive at the end? If that doesn't sound intriguing to you, 
then I don't know what does. <laughs> I especially love the first 100 pages because that is kind of like where we get to know Victor and Eli in their like college setting. You also kind of see their friendship and their fascination with EOs and I just really adored that part of it. This book had like a lot of ups and downs in the plot for me, mostly ups, but at some points I felt a little, maybe bored is not the right word to say or how to put it, but it was just a little less intriguing to me. The book has very short chapters and you also kind of like switch from a third person point of view to all of the different characters. I don't know if I'm making any sense right now, but it was just really fast paced, very dark, especially the descriptions of how Eli and Victor become extraordinary is because it deals a lot with like near death experiences. So they basically kill themselves. And if you cannot really handle like descriptions of how they try to kill themselves, which I thought were very dark actually, then don't pick up this book because I feel like it could be very triggering regarding like suicide and stuff like that. Even though they kind of don't really want to kill themselves because they need to have a near death experience, but the line is very blurry and it definitely explores the theme of like what is good versus what is bad and even like is there such a thing of good and bad or is it all just kind of like gray? I thought it was very well executed and I'm excited to pick up the sequel, although I feel like it will deal with different characters and a very different plot. You can definitely read this one just by itself, but I'm planning on reading the sequel. <laughs> so I give this one a four out of five stars and if you haven't picked it up, do it, but be warned, it's quite dark. So these were the four books that I finished in June. Let me just talk about the one and only book that I actually finished in July. Which is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. I love this one so much. <laughs> it was so entertaining and I don't really wanna explain the plot too much because I feel like you kind of need to go into it not knowing more than what the back of this book says. In this story, we follow our main character, Nora, or at least in this life, she is known as Nora because she has grown up with a con artist mom and she is a con artist herself. So she's had multiple backstories, not per se like personalities, but how do you call it? She's been multiple characters, if I can word it like that. Five years ago, she has escaped from her mother and she became Nora, who is like a nice, normal girl who has a nice, normal life until at the start of this book, she and her friends are held at gunpoint in a bank. And she is basically the only one who can get them out of this situation alive. Oh my God, did this remind me so much of La Casa de Papel on Netflix, if you've seen the show. I think in English it's called Money Heist. Not only does the cover kind of remind me of it, but just like the whole being stuck in a bank and trying to escape. It just reminds me so much of that story. It is of course not the exact same, but if you like La Casa de Papel, whoa, I said that bit a very American accent, you will definitely enjoy this one as well. Plus I loved getting to know Nora's backstory and how she grew up with her mom and like the cons that they did together. It was just so entertaining to read about. And this book also deals a lot with sexual abuse and domestic abuse. So again, triggering, themes, but I thought it was executed very well. And it also talks about endometriosis, mitriosis. Don't know how to say that in English, but a condition that a lot of women have and that I haven't really read about in fiction until so far, until this book. So I think I gave it like a four to a four and a half out of five stars. Plus there is actually a movie in development of this one already. And it literally just came out this year. So that's a good sign. I think it's going to be great. Okay, so that was the only book that I finished in July, but I am actually currently reading two. And one of them is just like a giant brick of a book. And I'm so proud of myself that I'm almost done with it. I was so intimidated by this one. And that is The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. As you can see, around two thirds of the way through, I am on page 408. But then I went on vacation and I was like, I'm not bringing this brick of a book with me in my suitcase. So I took a little break from it and I have about 240 pages before I'm done with this book and I will definitely read it in the month of August. And then the other book that I'm currently reading is Hello Vita Mensa, which translates to Hi White People by Anusha Nazume. This is a Dutch nonfiction about racism in the Netherlands because I have read a couple of nonfiction books about racism, but that is mostly focused around racism in the US or either the UK. And although a lot of things about racism in those two countries are probably very similar to racism in the Netherlands. I feel like certain situations need to be explained in Dutch by a Dutch author. 
if that makes any sense. I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, do I talk sh or not? Okay, my camera just turned off, but I'm just looking forward to learning more about like racism with this nonfiction book and more specifically how it is very prominent in the Netherlands still and how I can improve my own anti-racism journey or experience as well. I am sure that I will be able to write lots of new notes down whilst reading this book. So those are all of the books that I wanted to talk about in today's video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. Do not forget to check out the book of the month deal, which is in my description box down below. You can also find like all of my social media pages on there. Again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.